What's up, y'all? I got Dre over here from Cool and Dre. Absolutely. Yes. Philly, what up? All right, let's talk about the uh, the brand new song, Pick It Up. How did it start? Now, Joe, you've been around for a long time. You, you've you been here since, you know, when you would have to service a record, you would have to service it to the radio station. Things are a little different now. It's a little mm-hmm. different in, in the industry and in the streets. Now you kind of, because would you call this a strip club anthem? It is. Absolutely. So now you kind of service to the clubs, and then it circles back to the radio. So it's a little different now. How did the whole song come about? How did the sam- how did you get the sample? How did this song all come together? Well, you got to talk to Dre about Well, Dre, let's one. talk about it. You know, I was at the crib watching a Tupac movie. Shout out to Jazz Dillinger. He hit us up today. Showing love. Too you much love. Said. Too much love. But I was watching it, and there's a scene in the movie where Daz is playing the beat, and it was really fast. And Pac was like, yo, 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 slow that down. And it just inspired me, man. I, I jumped out the bed, raced to the studio, you know, chopped up the beat a little bit, sang the hook, and then called Cracker. I was like, yo, we got another one. And I sang the hook over the phone. He was like, oh, my God. Yo. <laughs> you sound just like, yo. oh, no, he's, he did the first line over the phone. He's like, I'm Trump, man. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> It's official. Dude, yeah. Dre, you, you come to the forefront a little bit, and um, do you see yourself putting out a project later on down the line like Swiss Beast did or Pharrell when they did the producer slash artist thing? Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Swiss. Shout out to Pharrell. Icons I look up to. Yeah, man, you know, we're going to do something. Right now, we focused on me and Joe's project. It's called Family Ties. So when it comes to me, you're going to get it all. You know what I mean? You're going to get the beats. You're going to get the raps. You're going to get the singing. And, you know, it's a new day, man. It's 2018. And, you know, the girls need more options. So so, so real quick, let's talk about Family Ties. Is this the first single off of that collab well, album so between you two? So excited is the first single. So excited is the first single. So excited. It went top five. Right, so, right. So, you know, um, Dre been writing hits for Khaled, his whole thing, writing hits for me. Mm-hmm. He been writing hits for the game. He been writing hits for Lil Wayne. He been writing hits for anybody you could think. But he always wanted to be in the background. You know what I mean? He's caked up. He be in Miami. He be chilling. No, yeah. He don't gotta do yeah. all this Philly. We all cold stuff. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he ain't want to be in the forefront. But you know, I told him, Yo, Yo, Jay, I left him on the so excited. You know what I mean? He did a reference, and we were supposed to get some other artists to do it. They did it. I didn't think they did it as well as him. Right. Big boys. So, you know, I said, yo, Dre, I'm going to leave you on it. He was like, nah, man, let such and such. I was like, nah, nah, Dre, just stay on it. So we did it, and, and being we've been family for so many years, the energy was so crazy. Once it went top five, I was like, oh, that's it. We got to go. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, start cooking up. Let's go, because... The people like seeing us together. Mm-hmm. I'm going all over the country. I'm in L.A. I'm all over. The girls is like, hey, where's the guy, Dre? I'm like, damn, we got <laughs> something. This nigga here. <laughs> Maybe I'm sleeping on my brother, man. We got something. And, yo, the album crazy. Joe, how did you land a role in a Netflix original, She's Gotta Have It? Well, it was crazy, man. You know, I was on my way to uh, L.A., so I got on JetBlue Mint. That's like the dopest first class to L.A. from New York. And out of nowhere, Spike Lee is sitting next to me. Wow. So you know them flights to L.A., them, them red eyes at 5 in the morning. You want to sleep the yeah. whole joint. You actually stay up all night to sleep on the joint. But me and Spike, we thought we was going to sleep. We talked for six hours straight like this. He was like, Joe, I was cracking the Bronx. And he's staring at me like a director. So we going back and forth, Brooklyn, Bronx, Bronx. Next thing you know, we exchanged numbers. The next day, he called me up and was like, yo, you want to try out for this movie? I mean, um, this this series I'm doing? I'm like, bet. So I studied it. Um, I went in there, and I killed it, man. And it was an honor, man. And through the Spike Lee, uh, she's got to have it, which we, thank God, we got a second, um, second season coming. Mm-hmm. But uh, Kevin Hart's people... Uh, Malcolm Lee and uh, Will Packer contacted me, so I just shot a movie with Kevin Hart and nice Tiffany school. Haddish. Nice school. Mm-hmm. So they saw the She's Gotta Have It was like, yo, I mean, She's Gotta Have It was uh, uh, the new Taraji movie. The the main the main guy from She's Gotta Have It is in the new Taraji movie. He, he's her man. Uh, the girl 
from She's Gotta Have It, the star just got a new role in the Avengers. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Spike Lee's responsible for Samuel Jackson, Queen Life. I mean, we could just go the on. List goes on. Everybody yeah. started with him and, and, you know, went on to do great things. So, you know, it's amazing, man. And speaking of being responsible for a lot of people, Terror Squad, you got to give it up to uh, DJ Khaled. You got to give it up to Remy Ma. They are killing the game right now. How do you feel about that? Because you all kind of started together. Man, Dre on this song, right? He said it best. He said, whole click lit, man. I'm just saying, might as well. I, I, that's <laughs> how I feel. Yeah. You know, my sister just came in number one most added, yeah. Melanin Magic. Yes. Absolutely. You know, I executive produced the album. She's, yo, let me tell you something. She's in such a beautiful place, man. She called me last night, brother. I love you. And this, I had to throw her off the phone. It's weird to get the nice Remy. Right. You know what I mean? She's usually calling you, trying to kill you for yeah. something. But to get the, I love you, this, oh, we came in number one, this, this. I, I love that, man. It reminds yeah. me of when she was a young, young girl, you know, coming up, man. And I'm just proud of her, man. Joe, as an executive producer of Remy Ma's new mm -hmm. album, what can fans expect and what's going to be different from her debut album? You talking to a biased guy, man. Uh it's almost a racist question. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm pro Remy. <laughs> you know, I, I, she's the best. Like, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. She's spitting better than guys. I feel like Remy Ma spits better than the guys. That's just my opinion. And the, the, even Dre was like, yo, man, that girl, I, she came up in that studio and she, yeah, no, she's spitting in there you know what i mean and she got hits and i'm just proud of her man that Me too. what you got to understand is the inspirational point of her you know she came out of jail seven and a half years man who comes out of jail and gets their career popping like this and on go fire platinum and on yeah. fire number one in tv shows and black love her mm -hmm. she got the best husband in the world like who does this, man? Right. You know what I mean? That's inspiring not only women, but men too. Who's like, yo, I did time, she did time. I could get back on my feet. You know what I mean? It's an incredible, it's like a Robin Hood story to me. You know? Right, right. Let's backtrack to uh, pick it up real quick. Um, the, you released a video last night, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, last I saw it on World Star last night. But we put it out on title three days ago. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, um, I saw it on World Star last night. I think you guys saw it this morning, right? So there's a little clip in the video. Who produced the video? You guys produced it together? Gil Green. Oh, Gil Green. Okay. Yeah. There's a little clip um, where you guys cut and you go to Tiffany and uh, you talk about some things that are pretty close to your heart and important to you. Yeah. Um, of course, you talked about Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you, you talked about uh, the hurricane, of course, Maria, and you also talked about Donald Trump. So there's a line that you say... Um, F Donald Trump, basically. Yeah. Um, why that? Is that because we of the, now, man? We there now, right? We try to be civilized. We uh -huh. try to be gentlemen about this. We try to like, you know, you know. One, I mean, to tell you the truth, the day he got elected, I was horrified, mm -hmm. and so was everybody else, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I drove through Manhattan that day. Nobody was outside, People right? So I never seen somebody get elected that the whole world's mad about. And then he proved everybody right. You know what I'm saying? He going at the Mexicans. You know, he called them all drug dealers, rapists. He uh, went at the Haitians. He went at the Africans. You know, this is incredible stuff. Right. This dude is talking. Like, he's just totally violating everybody. Puerto Rico, he went over there. These people ain't had no water, no power still. He throwing paper towels at them like yeah. the cockroaches. I couldn't take it no more. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I had to get uncivilized for a second. Yeah. Simple. And it's deep. It's from the heart. Let, let, let's talk about what you did for Puerto Rico. Was you took a? How big was the plane you took? A couple over of planes. A few planes. Okay. Yeah, two, it, each plane fit two hundred um, and twenty uh, thousand pounds of food, water, supplies, women yeah. hygiene, pampers, you know, uh, canned foods, and we we took a couple of planes. And thank you to Jay Z and Desiree from uh, Rock Nation, man. They really stepped up. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Yo, Jay, we got to do something. You know, we got to do something for my people, this and this and that. So he was like, all right, so I'll pay for the first plane. <laughs> <laughs> Fill it up. I was like, what? He sent me a picture. This joint is bigger than the block, me. I was right. like, how the hell are we going to get this fool? But Kevin Hart, Khaled, uh, yeah. Cardi B, so many people came. Uh, Spike Lee, so many people came and told people, yo, come deliver some food. And, you know, I, I had to hold back tears that day because... I know that my people over here is hurting. Right. So for an old lady to walk down the block and give you a couple of her 
her waters, a couple of her canned foods. That was real deep to me because they was like, you know what, we can get this in another week or two, but they really need it now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was it was powerful. And it wasn't just a Latino thing. It was Latino. It was black. It was Asian. It was Jewish. It was right. Muslim. Right. The people that was... We had a truck pull up uh, that was the, 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 the Nation of Islam. Mm-hmm. Right? So the Muslim dudes pull up in like an 18-wheeler full of food. Wow. And everything, right? When they pulled out... The Hasidic Jews pulled up in the truck right behind them. The Jews mm-hmm. with the curls and all that. Right. With an 18-wheeler full of stuff. This wasn't even, this is a humanitarian right, right. thing. I couldn't see that Trump couldn't see how much we was hurting and the regular people in America could see it so clearly. Right. What's going on over there right now? You know, the problem do people is, still not have electric? Do they yeah, still they, not have clean water? There's a lot of people without electric and without water, but, you know, uh, maybe 60% of the island... 60 to 70 percent got got electric i mean they learning right with it. it's a new reality they gotta live with life that way when i went over there to take my family some food i took like three suitcases and when i walked in the door it was a thousand dudes and a thousand cousins yeah i met them all three at a time when i walked up in there it was a hundred of them i was like oh my god right like it's just so so many of them you know what i'm saying and uh you know, it's, it's just crazy, man. You know what I mean? What happened in Puerto Rico? I can't believe, you know, Puerto Rico got treated like a third world country. It sure did. That's it. Looking back through your career, Gerald, do you have any regrets? Man, I'm sure I got a lot of regrets, man. Uh, I regret not signing Rick Ross. I regret not signing mm. Pitbull. I regret, mm. regret, you know, it was so many things, man. I regret not signing Eminem. Wow. I regret, like, I could just go on forever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's tons of regrets. You know, uh, I regret not working as aggressive as I do now. You know what I mean? Uh, back in the days, I would put out an album. He would always stay on me, but I wouldn't listen to him. I put out an album, I go on tour, make a bunch of money, and then chill. Right. For like a year and a half. And y'all be like, yo, where's Joe at? I'm chilling. Right. I'm sitting with my wife on the beach, chilling regular life. Then I start getting back in the studio. People don't realize once you lose that momentum, how hard it is to come back with another. I've just been blessed to keep putting out hits. Right. You know what I mean? But Dre used to be like, yo, get to work. And now, this album is done, Family Ties. We're already on Dre's album. We're already about to go back to Remy's album. We're about to... We not playing with these people. We just gonna keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Now, Dre, Joe might not tell us, but I heard Jay Z might be on this album that you guys are working on. So, well, JB, Jay Z might not be on this album. I <laughs> asked him to get on a song. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep it on it. I asked him to. He was like, he's, you know, he gonna think about it. You know right. what I'm saying? So we just we, we we leave it at that. Nah, he gonna do it. But you know, yeah, listen. You know, you know, we gonna give him that oh, option. Man. You know, we gonna present it to him in the right way. You know, it's Jigga, man. It's yeah. old. Listen, so you he, you feel like now, um, the pro, uh, you, you know, throughout your career, you work a lot harder now than you did as a young Fat Joe. Yes. And, but why is that? It's just, is it just because the learning curve, well, just the, life? It's, the, well, what's... the problem is is that everything's moving so much faster right yeah. now, man. It's like, um, I remember I had this album, and I was listening to it. I thought it was the hottest album in the world. Um, and I'm working out to it every day, and, and, and I love the album. Then I went, I, sent, I went to see the artist perform like a month later, and he did this song. I was like, yo, this is old. Like, yeah. And that's me. So these young dudes are really catching that that music like this, you know, and it's really, really, really moving. So you gotta keep it, you gotta keep it moving, man. You know what yeah, I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta keep that media that, right now. that everything's content. Everything's instant. Everything's instant. You gotta keep that content. Like I like I, I started doing a podcast because you know I'm gonna slip one curse in here, y'all can fix it. But you know I talk. Right. So you know. One. Yeah. That's, not that's the one you know what i mean you know that's that's my thing so everybody been telling me yo you need a podcast yo so i i, I did a podcast like um eight series with title and uh man it's, it's so much fun it's amazing but you just need to give these people content man. right back in the days it was more about an artist being a mystery or being unapproachable now they really want to know. Yeah. Yo, what you ate for breakfast? What you ate for this? What you doing Absolutely. with this? Absolutely. What yep. you doing? And if you don't adapt to it, then, you know, you old school, baby. Yeah. Yeah, you right. 
What's it like working with Jennifer Lopez on multiple occasions? And is she really hood, Jenny from the block? Does she go to the bodega, Joe? No, I don't think she's hood. And I, <laughs> oh, I, I, to answer your question, right. I've never heard a curse in my life. She smells better than anybody on the planet Earth. Mm. Not Lavaina. No, no. Smell better than anybody. <laughs> I'm not talking about just women, female, any. If J-Lo was 10 rooms down, you smell it in here. Good God. Like, it's, it's amazing. I don't know what she puts on. Right. And, and uh, she just asked me to come and perform with her at the Super Bowl. They got like a Super Bowl party. So we, we, we're deciding because only little planes go in Minnesota and I yeah. like big planes. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. But, but, but I think I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you consider yourself a legend? Of course. As you should. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, you should. And I'm trying to consider myself the greatest of all time. Right. That's where we at right now, man. When you hear this music we about to put out, it's really going to put you in a real conversation. So when you gonna, you know, when 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 you get on your hip hop mm -hmm. and you on the stoop talking to your man's breaking night talking about hip hop, after this album's let go, it's gonna be a serious conversation of somebody's gonna be crazy enough to say, "Yo, this Fat Joe might be the greatest of all time." Yeah, dude. like that's what we going for right now. Legacy. We, you know, the the only guy I seen do it, you know, to this point is my idol LL Cool J, who has so much longevity, and at that he's more like rapping now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But somebody who came out in our era, me and you, we grew up together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Really, if you think about everybody who was in our era and all that, nobody's really putting out them top fives in America. We, you know? And we talked yeah. about that. Yep. Nobody nice. putting out, no one has the, the sustainability so I guess, so I and guess the longevity I never, like you. I never believed in this theory, but I'm going to use it because it works in my favor. <laughs> right? I never believed in this theory. It, you know, when they say... Uh, you know, it ain't who wins the race first, it's who lasts longer. Yeah. yeah. This is a marathon. Yeah. Uh -huh. This isn't a race. Uh -huh. Man, this is not a sprint. This mm -hmm. is <laughs> this is serious. Anybody who thought they was competition with Fat Joe in 9 3 or 2000s or whatever, they looking at that sprint. <laughs> they looking they at, at that marathon. marathon. They yeah. like, oh my I agree. God. This guy caught He's a still 30th running. win. Going. <laughs> He's going. Like, you know. what's, the, what's the direction of this project? The, uh, the last single, you know, was for the strip clubs. Yeah, I mean, you know, we call it modern nostalgia. It's that vibe that, you know, that mid-90s rap where, you know, the videos were super expensive and the beats mm -hmm. were big and big samples and big talk. You know, when we when we rap or sing, you understand every word we sing. And that's important to us, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, the album is just, it's just sparkling. You know I mean? Right, and we like, took a lot of samples yeah, you might know from the past in 2018. That like we did was so excited or oh, oh, would like pick it up. You know you're gonna be really you're gonna be really bugged out with this album right here. This is, we we started a new style of music. It's called yeah. modern nostalgia, and and Bruno Mars is on the same page with the joint with him mm. and him, him and uh, Cardi, Cardi B right yeah. now. That's straight Bobby Brown. Yeah, I you know. You know what I mean? That that Bruno Mars straight Bobby Brown. I don't know. You know he he looked different. It's 2018, he's a pop star, but when you listen to his music, that's straight 90s R&B. Mm -hmm. And talking about, talking about making music with lyrics that you can actually hear, how do you guys feel about the new artist that's out right now? Mumble Rap is what they well, call I it. Well, I love, I love all, all, all the youngsters. You know, uh, two days ago, I did an interview oh, up top. Yeah. Nah, Took my question. Nah, nah, two years ago, I did a two day, two, and I was talking about the new rap, and I love Little Uzi, and I said it on that interview, but you know, everybody like the exciting, you know, yo, Joe, this is Little Uzi. That's yeah. not the, what I said. What I said was, I feel like Lil Wayne birthed this generation of music. You know, if you listen to these new young artists and you see their flows, their melodies, and where they going with it, I felt like, you know, Lil Wayne's the godfather of the music. Mm -hmm. I love Lil Uzi. I bought his album. I, I sing his music. I never try to disrespect any black or Latino kid coming up in the game trying to do something right and take care of their family. That's not what Fat Joe's about. You know what I'm saying? So I like a lot of them. I like Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Yeah. Now, am I going <laughs> to compare him to Nas Escobar or something like that? I'm not. You know what I'm Yo, saying? But they took your words you know, and they twisted it. I was reading the blogs. It was like blog after blog. Like, he was killing Uzi. I, I was would like, never kill I was like, little that's Uzi. Not, 
that because we know I you. I can't you've even been believe here. it myself. Right. I'm yeah. sitting there. I looked at us to come. I, I told you this this morning. I said this is terrible, man. Yeah, like, it's bad. Why they did it? But if you listen to the interview, I say in the interview, I love Little Uzi. I yeah. bought his album. I play his album. All I was really trying to get at was, you know, Little Wayne birthed that that genre of music. Yeah, yeah. All these guys. Right. <laughs> Not just Little Uzi. Everybody. Yeah, of course. And now the new generation is dope because it just shows how far hip hop is. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, it was either conscious, gangster rap, and that was it. Right. But now it's it's evolved in so many different styles, and it's well, great for the culture. You're right. It's the beauty of the youth is that they're allowed to be who they are. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody who I love, you know, my son rap, right? So my son is with the. Gucci gang, Gucci gang. He, he turned up. Oh, that. You know, he one of them niggas, right? So, nah, for real. He one of them. Bad, right? And um, I showed him a video of Will Smith's son. Yeah. Man, that, that boy going hard. Yeah. That boy going hard. And you know what? He being himself, you know, music, even like somebody like a little Uzi. Let me not. I'm, I'm not trying to take back no talk. You know, I got major love for little Uzi and all that. He being himself. So a lot of these artists now, they allowed to be themselves. Back in the day, you had to be either this or that. And you at the front. And and even though I'm a gangster who grew up in the streets, been shot, stabbed, whatever you want to say, right? I used to get depressed when I'm reading the Source magazine or the Vibe, and every single rapper felt like saying, y'all got shot 30 times. I did 10 years in jail. Mm -hmm. Like that, you had to say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now these kids are allowed to say, Will Smith's son to say, I'm rich and so what? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So what? We the Huxtables. We don't care. Yeah. We're rich. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have a great time. You want to party with us? Don't you want to <laughs> be with a rich guy? <laughs> I'm looking at it like, woo. Yeah. Nah, I love the youth, man, and what they doing, man. It's, it's Hip hop is so incredible because it's so diverse, man. Yep. You got everything you want. You know what I mean? I tell people all the time, you want... You want to get spiritual, go get Lecrae. Yeah. That boy nice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's simple as that. My favorite song that I made in, in my career, well, it's two. It's two equal ones, right? And I'm going to give you a third, right? My favorite song is me and Pun Twins Deep Cover, right? Just because of what it was, how it was crazy, right? My, I would say the same equal favorite song is New York, Ja Rule, me, and, and Jada, because nice. how it felt, how it made New York feel. Now, I'm yeah. going to tell you my favorite rap record of all time. Okay. It's Marquis the Vapors. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. my, that's my favorite. If you think about how many rap songs you heard, do you know how hard it is to pinpoint the one favorite song yeah, ever in hard. your life? That's hard. That's like almost impossible. Yeah. Man, I hear that Vapors, I lose my mind. Right yeah. now, I heard it three days ago. Somebody played it somewhere, and I, I said every word, every day. It's, it's in my heart and my soul. Yeah. yeah. Now, Joe, last time you were here, you were self-proclaimed the king of sneakers. Really? Are you still? Because this, this diamond right here, she's a sneakerhead. And there's a lot there, of sneakerheads. Yeah, there's a lot of sneakerheads now. I was, but, I'm but, not the new sneakerhead. I'm the old type. It wasn't popular. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I, you know when it got popular? Yeah. I'm it's the, very popular now. I was before when it wasn't that popular. Yeah. yeah. Joe, I, too. You've been I in the can't, game for I've a long been time. forever, man. Joe used I'm, to lick I'm, the bottom I'm of the sneakers. Of, I remember. I'm one, I'm, one, <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of the pioneers of this uh, movement right yeah. here. This yeah. sneaker rights movement. Uh, but, uh, I say I'm one of the kings. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I, be, I, I met some other guys with some serious You still do the conventions and all that kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, I met I met some guys with some serious collections. You know, at one point I thought I was the king, but I did meet some guys with some serious <laughs> You went to the sneaker con and you was like, hold Not up Not just there. sneaker con ain't enough. They can't mess with us. You yeah. know, because I got, I got like. That's the new way. My joint is a problem. Oh, my, my sneaker collection is a problem. But I met other guys that have, you know, you got uh, Clark Kent. You got the mayor. You got a Wale's real good. You know, you yeah. got Khaled. That's Khaled, yeah. Khaled, been, been to, it's just so many guys that's like got real good sneaker collections. Man. Yeah. And now they have, you um, you know, the show um, Shopping with Such and Such. What's what's the guy's name that does? Uh, he takes all the uh, artists and he goes shopping with them. He does everything. Did you do it? Um, no, I'm not sure. What's the guy's name? Damn. It's always on World Star. Always. I think he just did Eminem. Who the complex guy? Complex guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I did yeah. it with him one time. Yeah, you did. Okay, you never seen the cuss? Okay, it's alright. 
Will your next Will your next artist come out of the Bronx? Yes. Uh, I have a female I signed. Her name is Angelica Villa. She's a young Dominican girl, about 19. Her swag is on 10,000. I call her the Spanish Rihanna. And that's how we're going to treat her, mm. to just be a super duper 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 star. And um, when you hear from her, you're going to know, yo, Joe don't lie. Uh, I got a, uh, a, a guy by the name of Marley Stacks that signed from the Bronx, too. I got a kid named UFO Feeve. Uh, he from Spanish Harlem. Um, and my son, you know, he from the Bronx too. So he, Rosso coming out soon, you know. I had him on ice for like the last three years. His job is to work out and be in the studio every night. But lately, he been coming up with some hot shit. We can't stop him no more. Like right. he's like, yo, let it go. Let's let it go. And Jay's like, yo, you ready for this? I'm like, oh my god, we don't need this guy. There's certain guys more you don't need getting too hot around here. You know what I mean? Because then you'll have a lot more to talk about when you meet Fat Joe's son. Right. You'll be like, yo, this nigga turned up. He ain't like his father. <laughs> this boy crazy. You right. know? Word. Hey, Joe, we appreciate your time. Dre, we appreciate Thank you, your man. time. Thank y'all for coming through, man. Single pick Always it up. Family. It's crazy. Support that, Philly. I love y'all. Shout out my brother E. Philly. He in here. Rest in peace, Maul. Uh, with AI's crew. You know, we came down here for uh, his funeral. I mean, he's Muslim, so I don't think they call it a funeral, right? Or, or is it a wake? Wake, yeah. Yeah, so we yeah. came down here for our brother, man. We miss him, and we love him a lot. All right, before we let you go, who you taking in the Super Bowl? I'm not a football fan, but I never go against Tom Brady. I could tell I'm not dumb enough to do that, B. I'm telling you that, wow. man. Watch your money, man. I know we in Philly. I ain't gonna lie to you. Listen. Yo, we about to roll you up. Listen, right no, here. no, no. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm not I'm I'm not a football fan. Right. I'm not a fan of the Giants. Just nobody. I can't get into the sport. What I do know is that Ted was trying to steal Tom Brady's uh sperm. <laughs> the, the, the little the the little, the little, the little uh, bear, teddy yeah, bear. Yeah, yeah. He was trying to take the sperm for a reason, man. Yeah. You got, yo, Philly got to go hard. All my guys from Philly, they turned up. Yo, we going to Super Bowl, all that. I said, listen, my brother, I understand you got a serious energy going. But watch Tom Brady. That, that, he's scary. I was in the movie theater. I don't watch football. Uh -huh. I was in the movie theater with my brother Rich Flair. He was like, oh, looks like the Patriots are trying to come back. I said, Tom Brady, like, <laughs> like you know, like, like what are you talking about? This guy is, this guy is a serious thing. But Philly, more power to you. I wish you the best. God bless you. I don't have no horses in this game. Okay. Philly yeah. Got defense, man. yeah. We gonna win it. We gonna win it, Joe. <laughs> we gonna win it, Joe. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all for coming through. Yeah. Cheer up with the station to hold you down with the hottest hip-hop, hip-hop, and R&B joints. It's Philly's Power 99 FM.